Hello my friends, it's Pete Walpar. Today I thought I'd share one of my stories with my viewers. This one's a little different. It's not a railroad story. It's a U.S. Navy story. The title of my story today is called Standing the After Steering Watch. The setting is somewhere in the Atlantic Ocean aboard the USS Jucana MSC-193 around 1967 or 1968. I served aboard the USS Jacana MSC-193 for a couple of years. The duty was quite good most of the time, but we had our shares of ups and downs. She was a coastal minesweeper. She had a, she was a wooden hull ship, 144 feet long, with a shallow draft, two 600 horsepower Packard diesel engines for propulsion. I was the ship's damage controlman and I maintained the repair lockers firefighting equipment, but when we were underway I stood engine room watches. Those big engines produced massive amounts of heat, and going in the engine room to take readings and check the engines every few minutes of a six-hour watch was an ordeal. There was no air conditioning, just a couple of vents blowing fresh air. If you stood right under the blower, it wasn't too bad, but anywhere else in there you broke into an instant sweat. More than one sailor had to be hauled out when he failed to take his salt tablets. While underway, everyone on board had watches to stand, whether above decks or below, in addition to their regular jobs during the day. And when the ship was in port, one duty section always remained on the ship to protect the ship or in case it was ever unexpectedly necessary to get underway. Since I was a snipe, I often stood security watches in port, but when I made third class petty officer, I had to stand quarter deck watches. When we were at my sweeping operations, I often worked the winches and reel wells. There came a time when we rotated duties during mine sweeping operations, and I wound up with the after steering watch. For those who don't know, after steering is a compartment in the very aft part of the ship, just above the engine shafts where they connect to the rudders. During normal operations, the ship was steered and controlled from the pilot house just below the ship's bridge. But in times of battle or in case of running into a live mine, they could damage the steering controls, leaving the ship helplessly roaming around the ocean. In that case, it was the duty of the man in after steering to hook up cable to the rudder controls and steer the ship from there. All the rest of the time, he just sat there listening to the ship's operations on a sound-powered phone headset. In other words, he had nothing to do. The only way into after steering was a round hatch, basically a manhole with a lid in the main deck back at the very rear of the fantail. While mine sweeping, most often it was just practicing and sweeping dummy mines, there were steel cables ran out behind the ship dragging tons of equipment, and it was not a safe place for anyone to be at those times because you never know when a cable might snap and cut somebody in half if you're above deck. So basically I was isolated down there, unable to come out even if I wanted to. How could anyone manage to get in trouble standing watch there? Well, I did manage to find a way. I'll explain. The first couple of times I stood watch there turned out to be the most boring detail. I would sit with the sound powered phones, looking up at the hatch and knowing if there was ever a real emergency, the likelihood of me ever getting out of there was slim and none. It was a very hot and uncomfortable place to be and nothing to sit on but the deck plates. The next time we went to mine sweeping detail, I slipped a paperback book into my hip pocket and decided at least I could read a book to help me kill the time. Often it was several hours. After all, no one would know since they couldn't see what I was doing, at least that's what I thought. A couple hours later, I had myself comfortable as possible. I was lying stretched down on the deck. I had shed my shirt, had my shoes off, just clad in my dungarees, I had removed my K-Pak life jacket when using it for a pillow. I had my sound-powered headphones on, was totally engrossed in a Zane Gray Western. So I did not hear the captain. His name was Lieutenant Niles Berry, by the way. He quietly opened the hatch, descended the ladder, and was standing right at my feet. Finally realizing something was amiss, I looked up over the top of the book which I had near my face, only to see the captain standing there with his arms crossed and looking quite perturbed. Jumping up finally to attention, I responded with, Oh shoot, 
or something quite similar to that. Finally, he departed, looking mad as a wet hen, without even speaking to me, leaving me to worry about my fate. Would I get a captain's mast or maybe lose my stripes? No one mentioned the incident to me. Some when we hit port in San Juan a few days later, I had begun to think I had got off scot-free. We went to quarters to prepare for liberty. The, engineers, the engineering officer said, Everyone can go on liberty now except Walter. If the captain did not like me, I'm sure I would have. it would have gone much worse for me. I had to spend the weekend painting the engines in the generator room, so basically I got off easy. I never did quit reading my books, but I had learned never to read them while on watch. I just thought I'd share that little story with you. Thanks for listening.